All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Well-Centered Woman podcast. I am absolutely delighted to have this conversation with the one and only Chandra Watson. So it's good to have you here, lady. It is so good to be here. What an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, you have established your platform on the basis of having a fruitful, wholehearted, complete, and full life as a single. And we're going to be diving into that. We're going to really get into it right now. But before we do, I love this quote that I saw on your website. You said, I lead the process of turning an aha moment into action. Tell us more about how you do that, lady. Okay, so aha moments. Uh, God has given me the gift to be able to give like um, heavy one-liners when I'm talking to women and it gives them like an aha moment where the light bulb comes on. And so what I endeavor to do is even with the aha moments that God gives to me first, and then I share them with you, and then you watch me walk out the process now that the light is on, and then you duplicate that. And when the light comes on for you, you have strength and courage to walk out your aha moment as well. Mm -hmm. And you got this, that's so powerful. We can unpack that there, but I'm trying to keep us in time. Now, but you've been doing this as you've been mentoring women all of this time, and you've come into that space, you haven't always, like being in the space of helping women with these aha moments, right? You had to go. Go ahead. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't been in the space knowingly. I had to have an aha moment that this is what I was doing. Right. And so once the aha moment came, then I could do it with intentionality. But looking back over my life, I think the moments or the years, maybe a season where I was asking God, what am I here for? And I think in the asking and the searching uh, for purpose in different seasons of my life, then the aha moment came that this is what I've been doing the entire time. So before when I was doing it, it was just like, I just love to talk. I just love people. I just love, I just love, right? And so it just kind of came from that space. And so, no, I have not always known. I think it was when I turned, something happened when I turned 40. And it's just like, it was like, I've been here a while now, God. (laughs) (laughs) I've been on earth a while now, God. Am I in the right, am I going in the right direction? Uh, Do I I have a people group, right? Um, I've been doing certain things, but who is my voice really for, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, a part of that questioning was so that I wasn't pulled in many different directions because I can do a lot of things, but it doesn't mean I'm supposed to do them long-term, right? I am an intercessor by call, right? Intercessors stand in the gap. Right. And mm-hmm. so I can stand in, t- in the gap in many ways, but I'm not, may not supposed to be able to feel and stay in that gap. I do my part and I move. But people are like, you have the gift for gap. Why don't you sell Mary Kay? You have the gift for gap. Why don't you do this? Why don't-? And it's like, no, 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 no. God, what am I really supposed to do? I'm 40 now. And that's when mm-hmm. the aha moment began to uh, come about for me that these are your people. This is your post. Amen. Amen. And speaking of that is so powerful. I got a thousand questions, but I'm going to stick. Ask (laughs) ask away. Ask away. Well, this one ties in actually, because you talked about your aha moment, Mm -hmm. but you had, and you weren't always in this place that you are in now where you know Mm -hmm. your purpose and you know your post, as you say, you you are on your square, but you weren't Mm -hmm. always like that. And there's another quote that you said, you said, I had a defining moment in my life where I started to wonder about my womanhood, purpose, my single life. I -hmm. needed answers beginning with my childhood. Mm -hmm. I desperately wanted to know the hows and whys of my life. So I started this incredible journey with God, the one who created me, that brought Mm -hmm. me to a place of discovery, recovery, and inner healing. So share with the listeners what that defining moment was as you led to. Mm -hmm. And how you so, partner. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So again, it was, I don't, something about the age 40. This, and this was, I am a woman of patterns, right? 
And uh, the older I get, the uh, the more quickly I can recognize a pattern. But before my 40s, I just didn't recognize that uh, my life was in pattern. There was a pattern around me with the women in my family, in my bloodline. And so I really began to ask God about the different patterns and the things that I was seeing over and over from the women in my bloodline, because I had already by this time, I had uh, experienced being a single mom as a teen, right? So that was one thing uh, that, that I noticed on my bloodline. And then I saw that I had become divorced uh, way before 40, right? So then that was another thing that was repetitive in my bloodline amongst the women, okay? And then I had just experienced um, a... Um, I would say well, a breakup from an engagement. So it's like I started to, I think the broken heart, the repetitive broken heart. Mm, come caused, on. Yes, that caused me to say, stop, right? Does my heart have to take on this? Does it have to? Or is this based upon some patterns I'm not recognizing? And so I said, I said, I see the pattern. And I said, I need to figure out what male has been consistent in my life. This was the aha moment. What male can I say has been consistent in my life? And the only one I could say was consistent in my life was God. This is not a deep religious anything, but there was no man that I could trace back saying he's been there the entire time. Not my father, uncles, no one. And I think it was from that place, it was like, let me go on a journey with God starting back from my earlier years, five, six, seven, eight, and God, you bring me up to now. Come and on. that was the aha. That I remember it so clear in my living room. That was the aha. Yep. That was the aha moment. Yep. The patterns and the cycles. So you kept seeing the same cycles, the same circle, the mm -hmm. same pattern. And then it's like, hold up. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That's what it was. That's what it was. Hold up. Hold up. Well, I done been around this mountain one time too many, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, now to those listeners who may not be following you on Facebook and those that will listen to this, I encourage you to follow her right now. And I encourage you to listen to her video. The wedding was canceled because now we get ready to have some questions, lady. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so yes. listeners that may be listening now, she did this um, video on January 31st. And from here on out in this podcast interview. We are going to be unpacking this because she, Chandra snatched edges <laughs> and left people bald headed in this video. <laughs> but it's an you're not the first to say that. <laughs> but, but it's good. It's good. It's such a powerful, authentic, and real testimony. She touched. You touched on this a moment ago when you said, mm -hmm. "Okay, you know, my childhood being a single mom, having a baby out of wedlock, then going through a divorce, and now this broken engagement." And that's mm -hmm. the aha moment, right? Mm -hmm. And so, going back to that video and thinking about that testimony, you said this, and I'm like, "This is so good." You said. There is a weighty purpose for singleness, just as there is for marriage. We're going to unpack. We're going to get into this. You said contentment. There's contentment and value in singleness. Singleness is not a disease and marriage is not the cure. Both are gifts and callings. Everybody has to do singles, singleness, but not everyone will do marriage, but everyone has to do singleness. Now, I want you to break this down for the woman. Mm -hmm. It's on IG scrolling, looking at wedding reels all day. And buying every class on getting married. Like she's so busy getting ready for the one, but she don't realize she the one. God is wants us, right? Can mm -hmm. you break down that what you were talking about? Yeah, I, I, I want to say one of the things that I have recognized, um, uh, because at one point, you know, I was like, God, is this really what you want me to do as far as singles? Because everybody wants to get married. So who's going to listen to me, right? Yeah. But at the same time, what I noticed is that singles were, like you said, um, watching reels, doing hashtag relationship goals, going to all of the wife boot camps. And to me, singles are gaining and gathering all of these tools for something they're not in. You, you, you have a, a, a toolbox. 
full of wife tools that you cannot use in your singleness. They're just going to sit there. <laughs> she done dropped the mic. It's over there by the front door now. Wait a minute. Say um, that you got a legal. tool that you can't even use. You're you can't about use sex. Then you can't use them. And so 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 I have to dial women back when they come to me for like coaching, questions, whatever, and they have questions about sex. Well, can you have sex now? No. Well, can you have it in the next six months? Probably not because I'm not getting married in the next six months. Well, then why would I give you tools in an area that you cannot use right now? That That's wasted time. That's wasting your weight. That's wasting your singleness. You're supposed to gather tools for where you are now. And I sincerely believe that if you do singleness well and do it correctly, it prepares you for marriage. So singleness is the tool for marriage. <laughs> Correct single living is the tool for marriage. <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet so that when I go back to get the clips, it's just you. <laughs> so living correctly, living your single life well, wholehearted, full, complete, mm -hmm. knowing who you are, being accepted mm -hmm. in the beloved, knowing your worth, and so just good. being very fruitful and wholehearted mm -hmm. as a single, that is your preparation for marriage. I mean, you can get some of the practical wisdom about interacting with a man and expectations for marriage, but you can't, that's the thing. Like we're buying every wife class, wife masterclass, 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 books, 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 oh, videos, Jesus. videos, like, hold up. Have you worked on you, Jesus? Listen, God has this thing already mapped out. He's a genius. He has it already mapped out. If you have to submit in marriage, you have to first submit to God in singleness. It does not, it's, it's, it's all right there. The same way you have to ask your husband before you make decisions. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge oh. him and he'll direct your path. It's the same thing. And so you're literally training for marriage in your singleness if you do it well. It's all the same. The same way you have to trust your husband, you have to trust God first. Learn how to trust someone over you. It's the my same God. thing. It is the same thing. If I can't be vulnerable with God with my brokenness, if I can't cry and lay out before God, if I can't worship him and show him my brokenness, how am I going to have a vulnerable heart for a man? If you, it's, you, it's, you it's, want a real partnership, a real kingdom partnership, yep. you got to trust God and have your heart open to him or you're going to go into a relationship not trusting that man. You got to be vulnerable. Absolutely. The same way you don't want your husband to cheat on you, you shouldn't want to cheat on God. It's all the same. The same way there's a covenant when you get married, there's a covenant between the believer and God. It's all the same. If we just do singleness well, that's all. <laughs> just do sing singleness well. Yes. And you'll be prepared for marriage. Yes. It's a whole word. My yeah. Lord. That's my oh. boot camp. <laughs> Come on now. Now, so now speaking like, and I'm getting ready to go into this next question. I've gone through, I've been divorced longer than I've been married. I've been through a, you know, I was married for 10 years, been divorced for probably about 18. I've endured a significant entanglement uh, and uh, a broken engagement. So I could totally relate to the red flags, the dreams, the warnings that you had in that video. Again, we're talking about that video she did. The wedding was canceled. And so she talked about this. So those of you who are listening, you need to go back and catch her video and follow her on Facebook. But in that video, you used the phrase when you were talking about the word that God gave you, because I don't want to give it out because I want people to go forward. <laughs> but you used the phrase, I counseled myself. When God told you that that relationship couldn't go the distance, you said, quote, I, and I'm doing air quotes, I counseled myself to say this can be fixed because you thought it was due to his maturity level, that you were at different spiritual maturity levels. And so what would you say, what, or rather what happens or unpack what's happening with us as women? When you use the word, I counseled myself, how many times are we doing that as women to justify and rationalize? Can you unpack that a little? Oh my gosh. So it's all about what you have been intentional about working on within yourself, right? And so if you haven't worked on the poverty mindset, 
then poverty is your counselor until further notice. If you have not worked on the brokenness and the unhealed places in your heart, then pain is your counselor until further notice. If you have not worked on and exercised the fruit of the spirit of self-control, then lust and perversion is your counselor until you deal with those places. And so even if you are desperate, if you are thirsty, you know, some of us are thirsty. We want someone to desire us. And so the counseling will come from the areas you have not dealt with. That's where the counseling comes from. And so when I say I counsel myself, something within me that I had not dealt with was my counselor, my, my inward man that I had not given attention to, those spaces, that's what began to counsel me. Sometimes when you give men uh, breaks, that they uh not so much that they, don't, that, they don't, that they don't deserve but you give breaks that will cause you to ignore red flags that's because there's a part of you right that has not been dealt with and that part is making excuses so the excuses you've made for yourself now you're making for someone else but if you find a woman who has dealt with her area of excuses she won't give excuses and make excuses for other men you're only going to 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 get what you are and so if you're a woman of excuses, you're going to attract a man of excuses. You're going to allow him to make excuses. That's why it's important to live this single life, this life period from the inside out. So when I say that I was counseling myself, it was a place in me that gave excuses for me that I gave excuses for him. Yep. She's just dropping mites and gems <laughs> and gold nuggets and everything all up in here. I Amen. just wanted to let her just keep right on going that way. How many times have we counseled ourselves? I'm counseling from my woundedness. I'm counseling from my brokenness. I'm counseling from my need for attention and dates and dinners and validation from a man. I'm counseling from that thirsty place. I'm, count yeah. I'm counseling myself. from a That's what's speaking, not the voice of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. 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 My God. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, and I remember what you were saying in that place. Yeah. Yeah, I want people to listen to the to the video. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> I worked on that place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're to continually evolve. If yes. we're living our single life well, as you said, we'll be prepared yes. for marriage because we're going to evolve and we're going to grow and heal and deal with those places that, yes. could, that could be counseling a lot to us, right? Absolutely. Oh, that's so good. Then, you know, in that video, you gave some other flag, red flags, some circum some red flags and also circumstantial things that cause you to do to delay breaking up with him and to override God's voice, because God clearly told you that instruction. And there were four key things that I picked out that you did. Right. And we all I have done air last one. Right. <laughs> well, it's not just well <laughs> maybe three of them. Because okay. I did. One of the things that you said was receiving poor counsel from women who never seen a man treat them well. They never saw healthy male female relationships. And you had those women in your ear. The second one was being the counsel to lower your standards was like, girl, you'll never find a man all deep and sold out to God like you are. You need to yeah. settle down and settle for less. The third one was, of course, your own logic. Well, he's not taking away from my spiritual life. I'm still on fire for God. We go, we reading the Bible. We ain't having no sex. This is, this, this is God. This must be God. You know how we do. And then you didn't want to be judging him because he was at, he was not as spiritually mature as you. So those are four, out of those four things. Yeah. What do you feel like is the most common or just can you speak to those? I'm going to tell you something that's shocking to me, although I did it, <laughs> but I, I, it's, I don't know now that I'm out of it, I am um, somewhat shocked and concerned about the many believing women. I'm talking about women of God with the G-A-W-D um, <laughs> who are okay with just a man that knows God. They are just Okay. Um, I think for me, it was, well, we still have time because in my mind, I would not marry him uh, at, a, at a particular 
not so, uh, I don't know, not so mature place in the Lord. I've dated him like that, but I hadn't planned to marry him that way. But I'm hearing the women are like, well, he doesn't have to be into the Lord like me and is praying as often as I pray. You know, everybody is different, but if he loves the Lord. And so I'm finding that a lot. So then my question becomes to the woman, well, if he is the priest of the home and he is the one that is the head of the home, how are you okay with the man that can't see? For the home like that's that's very uh that's that's jaw dropping for me um uh, and you're not concerned so so like what is that that it's okay if, if, if you see for y'all <laughs> because in my in my generational uh bloodline in my in my the pattern has been that the woman has been the head in every way and so when i hear women okay with that it's like oh but then the other one too is that uh women are are okay uh with the whole sex before marriage they're okay with that one I mean, it's just different ones and i'm just like where, where are we god but i do know for me i did not want to be judgmental but I, I think at the same time i was not clear on my call right mm -hmm. because when you're clear on your call even if you don't know what kind of man you need you know what kind of man you don't need. Come on. That's if right. If you click on your call, you may not know exactly what you need, but you do have an understanding of what you do not need and what's going to take you off. And for me, you just don't find a lot of men who are willing to date and before without any sex before marriage. So for me, I was like, God, this got to be you because he ain't really trying to, you know, and he fine and I'm fine. <laughs> so it was like... <laughs> It was like this. That's how it, this got to be God because see, we're not having yeah. sex and we're reading, going to church and I know he loves the Lord and he looks. And I know he loves women. And yeah. He, yeah. So that wasn't an issue. <laughs> and so, and so what if he's not quite as deep as I am spiritually? Yeah. I can work with this and yeah. I don't want to yeah. be judging him. But, yeah. and so we give them the benefit of the doubt. And I heard a, a man of God on Periscope that I saw Felix Anderson. He was always say. Don't give the benefit of the doubt because there's no mm -mm. benefit in doubt. Like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. There is no, what? Ooh, it's so good. There's yeah, no benefit in yeah. doubt, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're giving well, them the benefit of the doubt. So you're willing to date him, continue yeah. to keep, create that, make that soul tie stronger. You can still have that soul tie without sex. So you had one because you love it. I did. Them, right? Absolutely. And so I, it continued to grow. Say that again. Say that again. I don't know what I said. You can have the soul tie without, without sex. having sex. I had it. Absolutely. I definitely have too. In that situation, you know, where I was engaged, we up here praying and going to church. We were in small group together before I came to Legacy. Mm -hmm. And you're praying with somebody. That's dangerous. You make a soul tie. Right now, I have oh no gosh. sex. What? Oh my gosh. I, I've definitely been there. I think the thing that did it for me, I had to come out of logic because there's nothing logical about marriage. There's nothing logical about marriage. Marriage is spiritual. There's nothing logic about it. And those things that you just mentioned, that I mentioned in that video, those were out of logic, out of logic. We are supposed to judge, righteously judge. So all of the things I was doing was out of logic. But the thing that did it for me was the Lord said to me, and I did not say this in a video, but I'll say it here. And I hope that it will help some hearers that the Lord said to me, since I'm the only constant that you've ever had, You've never had your father as a constant, no uncles, no male figures. Since I'm the only constant that you've ever had. And if you look at when we do wedding ceremonies and they say, who gives this woman to, to this man, right? And the father says, I do. The Lord asks me, would I give you to him? Hmm. That oh. thing wrecked me. That thing wrecked me. It, with all that you say he's good in, with all that you said, you know, he's, he was a good man, but the Lord was like, based upon what you know about me and how I feel about you, would I entrust you to him? Yeah. And you couldn't say yes. I could not say yes. That's deep. Yeah. That, oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah. We could keep going. I, oh, I could just yeah, see and here. Let's I got look back on all the other times. And like, oh, now God would have never put that together. If you know God, if you know him as father, which was the journey that I started on in the age, at the age of 40, I started on a father journey to become a daughter. 
And so the Lord was like, based upon what you know about me as your dad, would I feel comfortable putting my daughter in his hands and saying, now you take it from here. To death do us part. Yes. Is your heart safe with this man? Yes. Yes. Just because they look good on Christian paper. Just because he looks good on Christian fa fa paper, he can be godly, fine, and sexy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But is that man safe for your heart? Is he oh safe for your spirit? Is he a mm -hmm. safe man for you? Yeah. Does your, yeah. Would your father trust him? Oh, my God, today. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Let me keep moving because we got to <laughs> unpack some more up for this okay. video. Let's go. So the next thing we're going to talk about is this ring thing. This ring thing. Now we both, <laughs> we both got a ring story. Now in my first book, Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now. You know, I'm going to do my shameless plug. You know, plug. It's a Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now. Christian Woman's Guide on How to Get Real, Be Healed, and Move Forward. And in that story, I talk about uh, the man I was, quote, engaged to. Mm -hmm. It's more of an entanglement. He gave me his deceased, he was a widow, his deceased wife's ring as my promise ring. And Chandra, I kid you not, I walked around with this dead lady's ring on my finger. Did you say deceased wife? Deceased wife's wedding ring. Amen. As my ring. Until I came to myself and surrendered and, you know. Uh, but then we hear that you... <laughs> accepted a proposal without a ring. So like, <laughs> like what, what, what gives? Like, what were we thinking? Like, from <laughs> like, what in the world? Like, what in the world? For me, in hindsight, I didn't know my true worth. It showed that my se self-esteem was good. Like, I'm going to rock around with this dead lady's ring on my finger. Yeah. And But you said that it was like a poverty mindset. You yeah. let it slide because of Let's talk about it. Yeah, because I, I I come from a line of poverty where, you know, uh, paycheck to paycheck. Mom struggled with five uh, children and my dad wasn't in the home. Um, grandmother, same way. Like, I just, that's just been in my line. Um, not, not really any rich, you know, uh, well off to do um, in my family. Not that many anyway. And um, so for me, I felt like, and here's the kicker. Okay, so here's the kicker. And even at that time, I was on benefits. I think I might have been on food stamps at that time. And so when you're when you're on something, again, you you bring to you what you are. You settle for what you are if you don't deal with you. And so for me, it was like, we well, can get a ring at another time. The ring is not what symbolizes his love for me. Uh, I just again counseling right that this is okay to be done and then yeah. we, when you we, when you don't have your your my father has never placed a ring on my finger he's never really been there i had nothing to compare what was happening to and then you had and, the voices of women in your ear who didn't have anything oh my listen all of my closest friends were fatherless Ne none of us had our dads this is not something that just goes on in the dating uh, game or the dating mm -hmm. world, but even on your regular girlfriend relationships, you have to make sure of the patterns that are even amongst all of you all because they become your counselors when you are dating. They're, they're a part of your, your counsel, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, those are the things that was like, you know, we'll give him a chance. He's trying. I see his effort, all of this. And it's, and it's still not about the ring today, but it still goes back to what you said, not knowing my own worth and would Father God have me to walk with him as his daughter, living as, as much and as right as I can in the sight of the Lord, even down to telling this man, we're not going to sleep together. And then he can present this man to me who can't even put a ring on my finger. It either means he's not the one or it's not time. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. One of, the two. one of the two. So it wasn't really about him. It was, it spoke to where I was. Right. Allowing it spoke to where I was, had nothing, nothing about him. It spoke to where I was. And there's a whole nother part of, with that ring <laughs> that I, that with, with not having a ring that I did not say, I did eventually get a ring, yeah. but even that wasn't right. 
Wow. So you need to do a part two on Facebook yes, and give yes. us the real deets on that. So you guys, if you're not following her, I highly encourage you to do that. Yes. Catch the first video. But yeah, you're right. It was an indication. Like you said, it was an indication of where you were. It was an indication of where I was. Freshly yep. coming out of the of divorce, I wanted to be married again. Yeah. And he fit the bill. He was a retired. He was a, at that time he had a church. He was a pastor and he mm. had a deceased wife. So I'm thinking, oh, you know how we do. I know how we do. Well, how we did. How, yeah, how we did. Oh, and my, my first uh, ex-husband was not, you know, in the in the church like that at all. Not either. So now I have a man that says boo and Jesus and could pray and put up a word. And he put a, you know, I was going to assume. <laughs> Don't it make you think back now? Like, girl. <laughs> girl, bye. Like, I must, you know, I'm like, in hindsight, I'm thinking, girl, you must have bumped your head. Because yes. that's what I was <laughs> Both that's, of what us. I, that's what I was thinking. So it's like uh, the journey you said, the journey of recovery, of inner healing, yeah. of deliverance, mm -hmm. of really building up our worth. And, you know, like I said, moving along in this video, we talked about the ring, but you continued to snatch edges throughout the video after you got, <laughs> after you got through talking about this ring, you know, you getting back to marriage. And I love what you said. If I do single life well, I'll be already prepared for marriage, mm -hmm. right? And it mm -hmm. ties into this other statement that you made. You said, marriage is a holy thing, but women are desiring it to make them happy. Talk about it. Listen, <laughs> when I talk to women, it's, I mean, their eyes are like, I just can't wait to be able to fix his plate. I can't wait to be able to do these things. And it's like all of these things, when you, when you, I'm, I'm like a sober coach, okay? I, I bring people out of La La Land. Like, let's come on out. Let's come on down. <laughs> let's come on back to earth. Because marriage is such a holy thing. Uh, it is something that if done well, if, if you are connected with the person that God leads you to be connected with, it shatters generational curses. That's a holy thing. And there's nothing mm. happy about shattering generational curses. That's not a happy thing. That is work. That mm. is war. There's nothing happy about war. Have you ever seen someone happy to go to war? <laughs> right? Mm -mm. And so it's not a happy thing. Now, there are benefits to it, but there's nothing happy about it where I think we are in this uh, headspace that there's this dream of all th this idea. So we have our idea of marriage, but we don't come into marriage or think about marriage with God's ideas for why he created the institution of marriage. And so I find with a lot of women that they are going for the happy part of marriage and not the holy part of marriage. I feel like, and I know for sure that marriage is about death. So even when I think about marriage, I'm like, God, who have you called me to die for? Who have you called me? Because I'm going to have to die so that something greater in this man can live. And then he's going to have to die so that something greater in me can live. And then we both will have to die so we can do what God has called us to do. And when I look at funerals and I look at uh, weddings, they are identical. They both have flowers. They both have slow music. They both have a walking down the aisle and they both require a death in order for it to take place. It's like, y'all, y'all paying attention here? Okay. Come on. Come on. It's like a sobriety. It's like the sacrificial element. It's a character refinement, a death to self, a death yeah. to my ego and my little flesh and my little ways. And the further you get into singlehood, which is a whole nother, you know, we might have to come do a part two. Yes. But you gotta, you know, you get set in your ways, even living as a single. So some of that has to be sacrificed. That's going to have to go lay on the altar. And so mm -hmm. we're coming and, you know, I feel like Instagram and social media really play up that fantastical, all of these romantic fantasy yeah. notions, this really idealistic that keeps women's heads in the cloud, high in yeah. the sky, instead of the so sobriety and the sober reality of marriage, that it's a daily surrender, right? Daily, it's like you daily surrender to, to God's will, you're daily surrendering. It's like, and when the problems come, we can't be running together. We got to be all in. Real yeah. partnership, real marriage, we're leaning into each other. We're yeah. surrendering. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. I, I, I agree. I uh, try to, to uh, 
bring women into sobriety, single women, and let them know that everything that you're doing, if you do singleness well, there's an increase of it when you get married. So we die daily just as believers. Yeah. There's an increase dying daily when you get married. Right. We surrender and submit as believers, as single women. But there's an increased surrender. So now I don't have to only surrender to God. I got to uh, surrender to God and the the, the Lord, the, the lowercase Lord that he's put over me in the form of a husband. So now my, my surrender is now duplicated. And oh, God, if I have children, there's another level of dying. So it's mm -hmm. like what they people don't understand is there is an increase of everything that you do well in singleness. There's an increase of it, an increase increased requirement of it in marriage. And that's what makes it so holy. The holiness is when I want to leave, I can't because I have mm -hmm. vowed to a holy thing. I, I vowed to a holy thing. And so we, I, just, <clears throat> I don't think that women, I don't think that uh, the world or the church, if I may add, has given a clear or a sobering view of marriage so that you can really think, is this something I am, am I ready to die in this way? Mm -hmm. Am I ready? Instead, it's like, we're going to go on trips. It's my book. It's like all of that's mm -hmm. nice, but you will have seasons where you'll be called to die and you have to make sure that you understand that this is a holy thing and I'm in it until death, death do us part. Us part. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we don't understand the demand that's placed on us, the weight of covenant. We don't understand the weight of covenant, Chandra, yeah. and yeah. our hearts are not ready for the weight of it. Mm -hmm. We want the attention. We want to look cute on Instagram and wear matching Christmas pajamas, but we don't understand the weight. Amen. Yeah. The weight of that covenant and the demand that's placed. And so God is looking at us and looking at our ways. It's like, girl, you're not holding up weight in your single. You're not living single well. So if I sent your man, the one that I'm getting ready for you, you wouldn't be ready for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that we <clears throat> think that even the way that we date. So if, mm. if you if you find your suitor or it's for you, even the dating process is not serious enough to me. It's once you find that one, we're just doing dinners. We're just going out to different, you know, some of these believers, they taking trips. I don't know how you're taking weekend trips. Okay, that's a, that's another podcast. But, uh, <laughs> but it's just we're doing different things that make us happy. We're not planning for the holy. Oh we're my God. doing things that are making us happy. We're not planning for the holy. And, you know, it's not to say that there's not joy in that covenant because Absolutely. there is, but I feel like happiness is very circumstantial, but joy has that more of an eternal timber. Yeah. It's more of a delight yeah. and settled contentment there. Yeah. And so I marriage agree. does bring joy, but Absolutely. it's a holy thing. Yeah. And I think that, I think where, what it is, <clears throat> is the, the, um, the, the happy is up top and then holy comes under it. And it has to be the other way around. Because for me as a believer, I ain't happy unless it's holy. So for me, if it's holy, I'll be happy in that. I I, I, find, I gotta find, I'm a believer. What, what mm -hmm. believer, right, doesn't find happy in holiness? The righteousness and the goodness of God. Come on. Amen. That's what it is. Amen. Now, you talked about dating. Yes. You done touched on it. And so we're, I'm trying, I'm really trying to keep us in our time, but we did. Okay. This is a lot. This is good. Oh, it's so good. So here's what I'm seeing a lot of these days. There's dating advice along the lines of being proactive. Like, like we're really proactive to go out and make our business, to pursue our purpose, moving and grooving in our career, serving mm -hmm. God in our church, doing all these things, traveling. But then when it comes to marriage and dating, singles are quote encouraged to quote wait so the advice is they're they're coming against the thought that you're just supposed to sit and do nothing you're just going to wait on god mm -hmm. and you're not going you're just waiting for this perfect person we want you to go out and hustle and you know save the world and work your business mm -hmm. but when it comes to this thing right here you just need to sit and just be content and just wait and so the messaging is is that because of that thought process, single Christian women don't know how to date, that we don't know how to vet, 
that we don't have experience with men. So the mm -hmm. first time we do go on a date, we think, oh, this is the one dot com. But it's because we're so encouraged to do all pursue our purpose, serve God, blah, 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 mm -hmm. which is that's what we're saying. We've got to live that single well. But yeah. we haven't anchored our heart and, and done that deep, sober inner healing work. But then the message is because women are being pushed towards these things that they don't even know how to date well. And so mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts? How do you balance that? How do you balance the tension of that? I think, I think first, uh, first off, for me, um, and a lot of women um, are not good in this area, before we even get in the, into the dating process, most women don't have any female, I mean, any male friends that they're not dating. They don't have any brothers. They don't have any anyone that they're around where where when they get into the dating game, it's not weird and it's not awkward. We're not even used to the presence of a man before we even get to the dating part. We're not used to the presence of a man because the only guys that we may know, they may be already married or uncles, maybe. But it can, it can be any any man. We're just not used to we're not used to the male company. And what I'm finding is. And I, and I want to help, I want to help, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help the men out this time. I'm going to help them out. I know they want me to say this. <laughs> but women need, yep. men are more than husbands. And oftentimes women only want to entertain a man for the possibility of marriage. We don't under entertain for any other thing, to connect for business, to connect for ministry with, without the potential of marriage or anything. Just this is a good guy. There's something great about him and I wanna connect with him and do life to some measure outside of anything of a pursuit of marriage. So that's number one, where we don't even have male brothers in the Lord uh, unless they are unattractive to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those <don't> are easy. <laughs> that's good. Yes, those are easy. But then when we get over into dating, I think that women, you you have to be mature in your ability to be self-aware. Every woman is not prepared to handle the dating. I don't want to call it a game, but the dating process, the dating journey. Some women can go out with men and they're okay. But then other women, you're not, you're not quite ready yet. So you might need to ask the Lord to hide you for us. You know, you're not ready. You know, if you meet him and he's talking your talk, that there's going to be trouble and your flesh is not all together and your mind is not all together and you don't have your counsel all together. I think that there are components that we need when we do date. I do not think that every woman, and I said this in one of my, that particular live that you've been mentioning, I said that every love story is not the same. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go, everything for me goes back to God. God, am I ready? Are you calling me into uh, a place of dating to, to find the one, right? If that's what you're calling me into, then what does dating look like for me? Because if I say, uh, Tanika, this is what dating looks like for me. So this is what you should do. God may have called you to something else because your journey is a bit different from mine. And so where some, you need to just not date until you probably walk up on the one. And then others get out there, get the experience, but this is the parameters in which you are to date. And I think that we take uh, two seconds and then we come out of the friend zone. I think we should live in the friend zone for a minute and we don't, <laughs> but I encourage, and I don't have a problem with women dating and putting themselves out there. I think there's a way that a female, that a woman puts herself out there. It is, there's a correct way. So yeah, I'm here for it, but I want to see what you have in place. What are your boundaries? What are your plans? What is your timeline? Who is your godly counsel? Who are you telling? Are you going to date in private? I believe there's a such thing as privacy, but then there's also a such thing as secrecy. Well. So which one are you doing? Mm, <laughs> so, come on now. Listen, if you're going to go get your money, go get your man. But there's a right way to there's a right way to do it. There's a right way to Come do on. it. Yeah. So you're saying dating looks different for everybody. Your yes. dating journey, when you go to God and say, Okay, God, are you saying that you want me to get out here and date? Then what God says to you will be different than what he says for mm -hmm. me. There we need to have some boundaries and parameters. We need to have community in place. We mm -hmm. can't be lone rangers out here dating in secret. Come on, mm -hmm. somebody. Well, mm -hmm. and then you also said friendship and being able to have healthy friendships with men 
and that can be your brothers in Christ and you're not having all this extra and it's just an honest, clean relationship. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is it's some a- wisdom. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Amen. Hope y'all taking notes out here. My goodness. Whew. Now we're going to transition a little bit because okay. this is the Well-Centered Woman podcast. So I yeah. do talk about mm-hmm. the emotions that come mm-hmm. about in, mm-hmm. you know, with relationships. So we hit on that, but yes. you also have a business. You're very, you're multifaceted, you know, you're a worship leader, uh, all of these things. And that's going to be at the intro at the beginning of the podcast. Okay. But um, yeah, so you got your business juiced by mm-hmm. Chandra and mm-hmm. you started I Am the I Am Chandra Singles Platform. Yes. The question I wanted to ask you, when you really began to step out and do this, what kind of emo- what the emotional highs and lows of doing that, like the times where you got in your feelings and said or did something and then like, you know, like just the emotional highs and lows yeah. of really stepping out of that and how you how God gathered you. <laughs> He had to. To help you be sober because starting a business, putting yourself out there, having a website, going live, all of these things, sitting up here, you know, you had the whole juice and thing, you had to execute. Yeah. What are the emotional yeah. highs and lows of entrepreneurship? I, I, don't, I don't even think that the highs and lows ever stop, right? They're just ebbs and flows the entire journey. Um, I just, I know for me with the juice journey, I had never in my life even thought about uh, business, being a businesswoman and and owning a business, opening a business. That was just never ministry. I knew early on uh, that's in my bloodline. That's something, you know, that I I always knew that uh, would take place. But the juice business um, that came about because I just wanted to get away from sugar. I was your Snickers, your M&Ms with, you know, with peanuts in them. I'm, I'm your girl, you know, the cakes and pies. And I was like, gosh, I really just want to do better taking care of my temple. And so I started juicing at home and then someone tasted one of the juices and I was like, are you kidding me? You know, they're like, are you selling them? You know, you post things on Facebook. I'm just posting what I'm doing my day to day. And someone's like, do you sell them? I was like, no, I don't. Right. But then after a while, people were like, sell it and try and see what happens. And then it just, it took off, but it took off with someone that was not really the best mathematically in school. I had no prior language and uh, education as far as uh, what it looks like behind the scenes to have your, you know, your LLC set up and all of those. I just, none of that. I was like, God, you have to prove to me that this is again everything for me goes back to God I'm like God mm-hmm. you have to prove to me that this is what you want me to do and at, at that point I was selling the juices at my church so that was my audience but then when COVID came there was no audience because only 10 people could be in the room at one time on a Sunday morning so I didn't have an audience and so I was like God you will have to prove to me about this juice business and literally for the entire month, the first month of COVID, when it actually hit here in North Carolina, I sold out of my juices every single weekend. There was someone from the church that would, I would make 30 to 50 juices and she would take them back to Virginia and sell out and bring me the money back. God was like, I said, juice by Chandra. <laughs> Come on now. Wow. He was very clear. And so the highs and the lows have definitely been um, looking at what others are doing. You know, they got different stickers and labels on their juices and I'm writing on a marker with a marker. (laughs) So that old comparison, that old insecurity, that old, oh my. Yes. Yes. Okay. Guilty. Right. So the the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs with that, and then even learning the market and um, familiarizing myself. And I'm like, God, I need destiny helpers. So sometimes feeling like you don't have enough hands to the plow to help you do what you do. But then at the same time, knowing that you just can't ask the whosoever wills to help because that's not going to help either. So like going, waiting on God with each portion that has been like, oh, God, is this what you really want, right? And so definitely the lows of, well, what do I do now that it's wintertime? 
because in the summertime, it's a lot easier because everybody wants ju juices and drinks and they want to work on their fitness, but people get in you know fat a little chunky in the winter time you know it's you got, yeah it's cold and you have all of these holidays and so people are eating and they're they're the cuffing season y'all know what y'all doing out there some of y'all singles and so it was like god what do i do and so the lord is still just unpacking and showing me that this business should strive should thrive in this season and this is what you hone in on in this season and just giving me multiple streams of income and showing me which ones to push out at different times there is a time and a season for everything under the sun right and so that's what i've been doing but it's just that growth i think um i think it's good to have low moments because it helps you stay humble if it's always high all the time then when do you learn the lead the needed lessons and so i take those low moments and say god what did I miss here? What should I be learning? And then we go back out there and we try it again. I love that. God, what yep. did I miss here? And what yep. should I be learning? Yeah. That is so good. Yeah. <clears throat> so can you do, is there a specific time when you got in your feelings and what you learned? In anything, um, ministry, business? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, ministry has been really, I think that's harder than the juice business, if I be honest right now. And I think that one of the hardest things, uh, uh, you know, with women, it's a little different anyway <laughs> in ministry. Yeah. But I think uh, I remember a time uh, in ministry, I was at a particular church. And when I tell you the, the Lord was moving and the Lord has told me, you know, uh, and show me in dreams and stuff and prophetic utterances, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take you here, take you there. And uh, I had a time where I was singing my heart out and I'm like, the spirit of the Lord is moving in this place and everything is good. And my eyes are closed. And then I can hear that the music is changing and so it's changing the atmosphere and so I'm like go back to where we were and I'm still got my eyes closed and I'm still doing what I'm doing and God is moving and then I hear the music change again and I look and it is the pastor of the church like you know he's oh oh yeah 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 he's like ah, ah, ah. You know, and so he's so the minstrel is like I got I gotta go with the pastor you know that's what the pastor is saying and for me, it was um, one of those moments where it was like, God, you called me to this. But again, like, what is the lesson in this? It, 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 and it's happened uh, several times, um, but in different ways where I question like, God, why, you, you made me this way. As you can mm -hmm. see, I'm a very, I'm not, I'm outspoken. I say mm -hmm. what it is that need to be said in love with mm -hmm. tact right but even ministry wise i show up really big even when i'm not trying to i mean I, i've had it where someone has come up to me and said that the pastor said can you just stay in this one spot right here while you do praise and worship like i've had it i'm telling you over the years i have had it i've had it where it's like can you sing down there on the bottom instead of up here uh i've had i, I walk around when i do an session and i pray i've had you know different preachers male preachers um do you have to walk while you pray can you sit because i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a form-figured woman and so just in ministry alone even without the business aspect of it in ministry alone being a curvy woman i would even say being a sexy <clears throat> woman because sexy is godly oh whoa. wait a minute let's put a pause and put a <laughs> <laughs> say that again for the people in the back sexy is godly I do believe it is godly. I believe that the enemy has taken it like he has other things and perverted it. And so the world has given uh, us a perspective of their sexy, but God invented sexy because I'm sexy and I was invented by God. Well, <laughs> you know that mic still over there by the front door that you dropped when we first started. The yes, girl, it's all, all the way outside. And so, and so I found myself having to know who I am and not lose my identity because a man of God didn't have his flesh together yet. Uh, because a, a man of God was still wrestling with some of his roots from being a Muslim. I've had that too in leadership. Um, I've had to, I've had to make sure that it's like, God, what lesson am I to learn? But what lesson am I here to teach? My presence teaches a lesson when I walk in the room. So I have to know that either I am the lesson or I am being taught a lesson. So I have to ask God, which one is it so that I don't lose 
my ministry, right, that God has given me so I don't taint mm. and falsely represent God. So God, which is, the, is this the time where I am the lesson? So I may have to take a couple of pokes for a minute while you teach the man of God something? Or is this where you want to teach me something? Or is this both? And mm -hmm. oftentimes it's both with God. I'm going to use you to be a lesson to someone else, but I also need you to see and learn something about yourself here. And so I've had those <clears> times <throat> in ministry as a woman, as a matter of fact, I didn't want to go live because I felt like I would become visible to men. I didn't want to go live. I did not want, it's like, can I, can I get a little small group or something somewhere? Do I have to go live? Because my pictures are out here. And do, do I do everything from the neck? Can I, don't do no side. I mean, just all of those thoughts that you have as a woman, when you wanted to, you want to convey Christ, but you don't want to lose your identity. Some you sing so loud. Can you kind of bring it down? I've had it. When I tell you, I have had it all. I can recount the times. That and I is so crazy. Yeah. I remember telling a pastor, I am here to facilitate the vision that God has given you for ministry, but not at the expense of my identity. So we're going to have to talk. Come on. Yeah. So it sounds like you've had to go through experience after experience of being diminished. Like you're always having to shrink Absolutely. shrink who you are and diminish yourself to appease someone else who cannot stand or appreciate the fullness of who you are the fullness so, of, of who you are and as a result of that what emotional highs and lows you've had has come as a result of always trying to diminish yourself having yep. to shrink back mm -hmm. yep. that's yep. another podcast yeah i have but i have come to the place now when i meet people if, if I feel that I can tell them this, I'll say, hi, my name is Chandra and I am unapologetically extra. <laughs> <laughs> I am Chandra and I am unapologetically extra. Come on, yes. Yes. come on. And you hit a whole nother, like we could do three more podcast episodes, yeah. body image, yes. curviness. Have, uh, that's a whole episode yes. because that yes. is so profound. There's so much to that. That can be unpacked and I got to stop hitting this. It's going to make my recording, but that is so yeah. powerful. So yeah. powerful. And another thing that you touch on, because, <clears throat> and you know, we know that you're a prophet, <clears throat> my voice, you have, God gives you prophetic insight in yes. terms of operating your business, how you're showing up how you're flowing. So would you say that that is your main edge? Cause you know, people say, what is my competitive edge? You don't have a competitive edge. You yep. have a kingdom edge. Yep. Yep. That is exactly what it is. It's, it's, we have the advantage as the believer, we have the advantage. And, um, even with my juice business, it's like, God, what's the name? How do we, do? and, and I've, I've had my times where I logically thought myself into a place, even with the, the the juice business, and then I had to go back and ask God, what am I missing here? Even for the the names of the juices, if they were God given, I didn't I didn't look nowhere, look to see what anyone else had. It was like God would just drop it in my spirit. I'm like, up, oh, that's it, let's go for it. And so it's we we as believers do have the advantage, but do we recognize it? And then how can we partner with the, with the God of the advantage because we yeah. have it? So yeah. That's been my saving grace for everything, everything. The yeah. God of the advantage, the yeah. God of the advantage. Well, we're getting ready to wrap this up. This has been such a wonderful conversation. So good. So good. <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> so I have another question. Sure. If you could go back and give 18-year-old Chandra some advice, what would you tell that baby? Oh, Wow. 18 year old Chandra, oh my goodness. I would tell her that it really does get better. That's what I would tell her. Because at 18, you could have not convinced me that I would be where I am today. I couldn't have seen it. it things were so bad, even at 18. Because by that time, I was a mom by the time I was 15. And yeah, yeah, I got pregnant at 14. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> The journey has been been long, but yeah, that it gets better. Stick with it. 
it gets better because even then I knew God in an unusual way, uh, more so than some of my 18 year old uh, girlfriends. And so I was hearing, I was having visions, I was dreaming, I loved intercession. Even then I would pray all night and my friends weren't like that. And so for me, I was a fish out of water. Like I'm, I'm different from, from everyone else. And I was teased, but I would tell her to stay on the path with Jesus. It does get better. It will pay off. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Mm -hmm. 18 mm -hmm. year old Chandra. It does get better, baby. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. You don't look like the hell you've been through. <laughs> Only God. Uh, Only just, God. Yeah. And you could have never foresaw at 18 years old that you would be having the platform, that you would have juice by Chandra, that you would have gone through all of these things. None of it. People pouring out the way you do. God is good. God is so good. God is so, so good. good. Mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. And as we close this, um, just share with the listeners whatever else is on your heart that you want them to know in any of your latest projects, your services. Mm -hmm. I will have all of your links in my show notes and on YouTube so people can click okay. and get right to it. But just okay. share. Okay. Thank you so much again for such an amazing time. This was so, so good. I, I just want to encourage um, single women uh, to not be weary in doing well in your singleness and to get satisfied and get content in singleness does not mean that it has the absence of desiring marriage. You can have contentment and desire at the same time. And I just want to encourage single women to be content and desire marriage. It's all okay. Um, I have coming up, I don't know when this will, well, this February 18th, I have a, and it's already sold out, but I'm saying it because I have another one in May. So I want uh, those who are listening to follow me, but I do a ladies night in and a ladies night out. And so that's when we gather as women online, when we have a ladies night in, and then when we're able to go out and meet in person, I pour into the women uh, at a restaurant or a place that we have uh, selected. And we do that throughout the year. And so you have to stay on point with that. I have a mentorship for single women. It's a six to eight week. I haven't decided how many weeks yet because it's so much to unpack and to pour, but that will be going on in May. So I'm excited about that. And um, just keep following me. Keep following me. You're going to grow. We're going to grow together. It's going to be really, really good. Amen. So there Amen. you have it. The Amen. one and only Chandra Watson. It's been such a pleasure such a pleasure so much wisdom so much nuggets mm -hmm. she dropped the mic she snatched our edges i'm gonna have to go back and unpack this myself but we so appreciate you thank you so much this has been a powerful interview thank you man